Hey everybody, this is Charlie from Charlie Cobra Reviews. I just want to say I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, this is going to be our review for Coming to America. If you like the video, make sure to click that like button and subscribe to our channel for our latest reviews. And click on the notification button so you can be notified about our latest videos. Now to the review. Prince Akeem of Zamunda is visited by General Izzy who pushes for Akeem's eldest daughter, Mika, to marry his foppish son, Edie. Nextoria is a hostile, militaristic neighbor nation ruled by General Izzy, who is also the brother of Akeem's original arranged bride-to-be. Izzy threatens Akeem and says that it is better to be bound by blood and family than divided by blood and war. This occurs on the very day that Zamunda is celebrating the 30th anniversary of Prince Akeem and Lisa's wedding, King Jaffe Jofer summons Akeem and Semi and reminds them that only a male heir can in inherit his kingdom. He summons his shaman Baba and they reveal that Akeem has a long lost son in America that he must retrieve in order to avoid a hostile takeover by an Exdoria. I enjoyed this movie when I saw it the first time and thought that it was pretty funny. Uh, it definitely isn't a great movie, but when compared to several other sequels that happened years after the original, I felt that it did better than most. It was for the most part a lesser version of the original, but it's been years since I've seen the original and I didn't let that or my nostalgia skew my opinion in this one. I do plan on rewatching the original soon though, so I can see how much they differ. A big difference was that the original Coming to America is rated R, and this sequel was only PG-13. I usually hate when a company chooses to do this because I always feel what the fans or the audience gets is a watered-down version of the original, but it's hard to say this time around. Uh, this movie was full of laughs, and I was surprised how much they got away with it uh, for being a PG-13 movie. However, some of the jokes fell flat, and a lot of them were given away in the trailer. Also, there were some things in the trailer that I didn't see in the movie, like the Wakanda joke in the barbershop, and also how uh, Wesley Snipes' daughter, uh, Boboto, uh, came out with an AK-47 and stuff. You know, Wesley Snipes' character, General Izzy, was quite a character, and you could feel he was having fun portraying him, and he really stole the scenes where he uh, came out. I also enjoyed Akeem's three daughters in the movie. I really liked the opening scene, which showed Prince Akeem sparring with his daughters and stick fighting like the original movie. The middle daughter, Princess Oma, who had glasses, was actually Eddie Murphy's daughter in real life, Bella Murphy. And I also heard that most of the palace scenes in Zamunda were actually filmed in rapper Rick Ross's house. As much as I liked this movie, it also felt very thin and didn't have a lot of character development or much of a plot to speak of. It also felt like quite a few things didn't make sense and that the characters that came out in the first movie were quite different personality-wise or maybe just with their actions. I feel like I should give this movie a lower score, but I'm not sure if it's nostalgia again or the fact that since it's a comedy, I'm not really letting some of those things bother me as much. I'll go over my many reasons for scoring it so low in the spoiler section, but for now, I give this movie a 6 out of 10. I would say it's worth getting a free trial of Amazon Prime if you really want to see it in good quality and for free, or if you already have an Amazon Prime, you should give it a shot if you're looking for some laughs, but if not, you can totally wait to see this one. Alright, next is going to be the spoiler section, so if you don't want anything ruined, I'll give you a little bit of time to pause the video or come watch at a later time. Okay, now for the spoiler section. Uh, so let's get to it. Like I said, I enjoyed this movie and thought that it delivered on the laughs, even if some of them were forced or fell flat a little. I also felt that it was pretty thin on the plot, and from what I remember of the first movie, some of the characters were off or acted very different personality-wise. I loved how the movie began with Prince Akeem training with his daughters and doing the stick fighting, which was one of the many callbacks to the original film. And I think the conflict begins in the beginning of the movie when General Izzy visits Akeem and tries to arrange a marriage between his son and Akeem's oldest daughter, Princess Mika. You can tell that Akeem doesn't like General Izzy's son, Edie, but doesn't say anything other than his daughter didn't find him suitable. General Izzy threatens him after making a comment about the king being dead or near death and Akeem not having any male heirs. I still understand the conflict between the two nations and felt that this would have been 
benefited the plot a lot more if they would have explained it better. I don't understand why he would need an heir so soon if he himself hadn't even inherited the kingdom from his father yet. Also, the only explanation between the conflict of the nations was that Nexdoria was poor and Zamunda was rich. Anyways, then Akeem is summoned to see his father and shaman Baba and is told that he has an illegitimate son in America after a trice with a woman while being drugged. Now, I thought that the uh, flashback scene here was uh, pretty funny, especially with, you know, seeing how they made Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall look so young. So, now Akeem and Semi must travel to America to retrieve his son so that he can take the princely test and become heir to the kingdom. This totally doesn't make any sense to me plot-wise other than that this is how they wanted the movie to go. I mean, Akeem was totally a person who went against his father's wishes and traditions in the first film to find his wife, Lisa. It doesn't make sense that he would get this son to be his heir, even if he was blood, without getting to know him first. However, I ignored that while watching because I figured he would get to know him while they met and, uh, you know, when they went back to Zamunda with them. Also, before they leave, there's a pretty cool scene where King Joffrey Joffre decides to have his funeral while he's still alive. And it was very lavish and elegant and full of cameos from great artists and performers like Morgan Freeman, uh, Salt and Pepper, and, you know, uh, one other one I forget. But it was funny to see the barbershop scene and how Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall reprise their roles of some of the barbershop characters when they do arrive in America. But I also felt that the funny parts were already spoiled in the trailer. Also, the part about Wakanda wasn't even in the movie except for a different scene where uh, Tracy Morgan says it. You know, from there they find out that his son is selling tickets near Madison Square when they're told about the mascot being a Thunderbird that was part of Baba's vision. Now that was a pretty cool detail that I wish would have been developed more to make it more interesting. It would have been cool for them to have struggled to find his son, but instead the first place they go tells them exactly where he is. Also when he meets his son Lavelle, it didn't even come off as that awkward enough for me and Lavelle totally takes him back to his house to meet everyone or ask his mom. I didn't see this as realistic or you know how it would have played out in real life. Now, Leslie Jones was a pretty annoying character, but I felt she fit the job of the role she played and that people were a little too harsh on her as an actor for this role. But I also feel that she's kind of becoming like Kevin Hart or The Rock and basically playing the same character in every role. Now, she admit, admits that Akeem could be Lavelle's father, and just like that, they're whisked away to Zamunda. You know, no paternity test, no lie detector test, no witnesses like her friend from the club saying, yeah, it's true. You know, that was another thing very unrealistic to me, because anybody would say yes to inherit the riches of Zamunda. Now, when Akeem returns, Princess Lisa confronts him about having a son and the particulars of how it occurred, and uh, she was shocked to find out that he brought not only his son, but the son's mother back with him as well. You know, General Izzy returns to Zamunda as soon as Prince Lavelle returns, and makes it known that he has a daughter that he wishes for him to marry, and... Prince Akeem uncharacteristically allows this arranged marriage to take place. You know, Prince Lavelle must now pass the three princely tests, first uh, which consist of knowledge of his ancestors or predecessors or past kings, uh, getting the whiskers of a lion, and a third one which I'm not sure if I skipped over or if it's actually the part uh, where they do that joke on him or whatever about a ritual circumcision. But either way, I felt like there wasn't enough character development during those scenes, and also the ones where Lavelle interacted with Marembe, his royal barber. Uh, you know, there wasn't enough there to warrant the closeness that they all experience. You know, Princess Mika, Akeem's oldest daughter, is very upset about being passed up as heir for being a woman, and rightly dislikes Lavelle, and it seems out of character for her to aid him in passing his test to get the lion whiskers especially after only having a small exchange about being ridden off or judged for how they look or talk. I also felt that Lavelle didn't have enough rapport with his barber, Marembe, to be falling in love with her in under a week, or if they did, it just wasn't shown enough to us. There was a lot of that that didn't make sense or I feel was cut from the movie, or worse, was just bad writing and poor plot development, and it wasn't done right. The worst, though, had to have been seeing Akeem's character become the opposite of who he was in the first movie. 
And then he passes over his daughter to give the throne to a stranger because he's a man. And even when he loses his patience with, you know, a drunk or inebriated Lisa and tells her to shut her mouth after the celebration of the uh, wedding where she gets drunk with uh, Leslie Jones' character. Um, you know, all in all, I have to say that for me personally, this movie was full of laughs, but just had so much wrong with it that I should really be rating it a five or just an average movie. However, there are so many sequels that happened five years or more after the original that are far worse or just as bad that I feel since this one was 30 years later, it wasn't as bad as the others that I'm kind of judging it by. But maybe if I had seen the original right before seeing this one, I would have changed the, my rating, but for now, I'm not sure if it's nostalgia or just bias, but I rate this movie a 6 out of 10. If you thought the original was funny, then you more than likely will like this movie. But if the original is a special movie to you that holds a special place in your heart, then you might just think that this sequel is utter trash. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day and checking out this review. Remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date on our latest videos and hit that notification button if you don't want to miss any. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you like watching video games, check out our live streams on Twitch, where we're streaming every day, and our other channel here on YouTube, where we post the streams at a later time. I'm Charlie Cobra, and have a great day.